Hi guys, I'm Lawrence at Design911 and today we're going to be doing a tech talk on suspension components. So there are three key components to your suspension system. The control arm, a spring, and the damper. Why is the damper so important? Well, if you take a car suspension system and you get rid of the damper, you're just left with your control arms and a spring. And if you can imagine a spring with no damper, when you go over a bump, compress that spring, and you store a load of energy in it, and then it tries to basically release the energy and expand again. So it tries to then push the wheel back down. And there's no way for the spring to dissipate its energy other than until it's stopped going up and down. So that you can help dissipate the energy in that spring a lot faster, you introduce a damper into your suspension system. The way it helps dissipate the energy is by moving a piston through a chamber of oil. And it basically is pushing the oil through little holes in the piston. And this is what removes the energy from the spring. Here we have dampers all through the ages of different 911s. This damper here is from an early 911. The, the damper leg and the steering knuckle are all one. They're kind of integrated together. There are some cases where the, the damper is actually an insert into the leg and you can replace the damper if it fails. This is an example of a, a damper insert that would slide into the body of the damper. Not all Porsches were equipped with struts that have replaceable inserts. So it's just kind of luck of the draw whether you're able to put a new insert in or have to buy a new leg. Moving to a slightly more modern Porsche. This is just a, this is just a damper or, or strut, so to speak, whereby you would then clamp on your wheel hanger, which is a modern version of the steering knuckle. Next is, again, a similar age to this damper, but this is something called PASM, which is Porsche Active Suspension Management. What PASM gives you is basically variable damping. It changes how much damping there is. So you can either be really racy and set your dampers to be super hard, so there's not much movement, if this was, if this was a, a racy damper and it was set such you wanted hard suspension, it would be really difficult for me to push this down. Whereas if you wanted a more kind of comfortable ride, you'd have a lot softer suspension and this would be much more free to move. That's what PASM gives you. If you're not sure whether your car has active suspension management, there are a few ways you can tell. On your dash, you might have a button that looks like this, which is like a very small shock absorber that basically hardens up your ride. So the suspension will be a lot more firm, it'll be more racy, and you'll have a lot more feel when driving. If you can't find a button like this and you're still not sure, you can either look in the specs of the car that you own, or you can get in touch with Design 911 and they can look up your car and see if it was equipped with PASM or not. If your car doesn't have Porsche Active Suspension Management, but you would really like to have some kind of adjustability to your suspension, so you can have a mixture of comfort and sport, then you can swap out your original equipment shocks for an upgrade, which gives you the ability to adjust them. A shock absorber is pretty simple in its construction, and as a result, there's actually only really two ways that a shock absorber can go wrong. One is that you start losing oil and it, it leaks. And the other is that the oil viscosity kind of starts degrading over time. So if you found that your shocks have stopped working, but there's no sign of leaking, it's likely that the oil's kind of got to a point where it's lost its viscosity and it's too thin. And the other way is if you find that your shocks are really wet. So if the leg of the, sh if the body of the shock is, 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 is wet, it's got, um, it's got oil over it. This is a sign that this top seal is leaking and it's losing its oil. Other than visually looking at your shocks, there's different ways to tell, again, whether your shocks are either on their way out or kind of have expired completely, and that's with driving the car. So if you find that 
your car's rolling excessively and is really bouncy, that's a sign that the shock is no longer absorbing the energy from the spring and the energy is staying in the spring and it's just dissipating over time by going up and down, up and down, up and down. Similarly, if you're driving along the road, I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but you're driving along a road and you see a car and one of the wheels is bouncing up and down, up and down really, really fast and uncontrollably. Again, that's a sign that the rear shock is either somehow detached itself or has, is no longer working as it should do. Another sign is a car squatting excessively on acceleration. So when you accelerate a car, you often load up the suspension and that damper stops the car from kind of squatting. A good check that you can do regularly to see if your shocks are in good condition is just going round your car and on each corner, just pushing down on the wing to see how the car reacts. If you push down and the car springs back up controllably and then comes to a rest, your shocks are in great condition. If you are looking to replace your car's shocks and refresh its suspension, if you head to design911.co.uk, you can then put in the model and type of your Porsche, click on suspension and axles, and then onto shock absorbers to see a wide range of different options available to you. If you're still left with questions, the team at Design911 are always happy to help. You can either contact them by phone, email, or the online chat. I hope this has given you a better understanding of what shock absorbers do on your car and what can go wrong with them. I hope you enjoyed the video. Oh, 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 oh,